Hey guys, what's up? Cold here from TechInform.us, and in today's video, I wanted to show you guys the optimal export settings for Final Cut Pro X, and uh, just let you know how to make the optimal output file. Alright guys, so here we are with your uh, new project file. Let's go down here, I'll show you how to get to this. Open your projects, hit that button, now name your project, test for video. And it's really this simple to fix a glitch that a lot of people can't figure out. So set custom, uh, we want 720p, let's do 30 frames per second. And here is where you fix the issue that I'm going to explain in a minute. Now basically, here, this will be on surround by default. Switch this over to stereo, you're going to hit this custom tab. I leave everything else the same. Audio sample rate, 48 hertz. Render format, Apple ProRes 422. Test for video, okay sounds good okay so now that you have your project in here your event and that is actually really important that you have that correct so now you're going to drag the clip in you want hit E bring in your timeline this is my uh, what nine minute and nine second nine point one six second <laughs> intro for my vlogs playback okay so it works so now what we want to do is we want to go and export this so what we're going to do is we are going to go to share export movie export as h.264 and leave everything else the same now it's estimating it's going to be about 16 megabytes it's going to be a lot less than that now i'm going to explain the issue before i export this basically what used to happen is uh normally by default you export in current settings now, with current settings, it doesn't give you an estimated size. With current settings, that clip would probably be about 50 meg. It's ridiculous. So a 10 second clip, 50 meg. Imagine a vlog, it'd be like 4, 5 gigs. Uh, I know I tried to do it one night. And plus, the uh, uh, by default settings will not upload to YouTube, so <laughs> it's a double fail. So, what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to go to H.264, leave all the other settings the same, and hit next. Now, the error that a lot of people are experiencing is H.264 used to have issues. Uh, basically, when people would export H.264, it would give them uh, no left and or right channel audio. It was very random, and uh, I don't know if you noticed it in the CTFXC vlog about four days ago. That's what turned him away from Final Cut Pro X, otherwise known as Final Cut Pro X. I'm going to call it Final Cut Pro X because it's easier. So. We already fixed that by changing that to stereo instead of surround sound when we made the project or event, I don't remember which. So we already fixed that, now we can just export as H.264, documents, and I can do it to my desktop, it'll be easier. Test your video, save. Save, this will take a minute, and it will process the video. Now on my machine, it takes about the length of the uh, clip, so if I have a 10 minute vlog, it'll take about 10 to 12 minutes to do this. Uh, you can see here, it took about the time of the intro. So, now that this is done, we can play it back. And that is in H.264. Scroll to the end, it works. Boom. Okay. Close out of that. Let's minimize Final Cut Pro. And here is your 10 second clip. Get info. And it is about 8.9 megabytes. So it's just under half of what it estimated the file size to be. Now, I don't know why it's estimating the file size to be so much larger than it actually ends up being. Uh, it's not a bad thing, of course, it's estimating it at a very much lower level than what it could be, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, now, uh, which document was it? It was a, one of the tech videos I did a few days ago. Uh, it was a 14 minute ScreenFlow video. I exported out of ScreenFlow and lost this, it ended up being about 3.5 gigs. I imported it into uh, Final Cut Pro, edited it, added background music, added intros, outros, some text overlaying, some uh, basically all around editing. And uh, I ended up getting that video down to 350 megabytes. And the reason I'm telling you about this is it didn't only compress it, it added effects, it added music, it added more, it added more stuff to the video. So theoretically it should have been more. Well, it ended up being 10% of what the other clip was. Isn't that ridiculous? So the compression is insanely amazing in this application. And it's not even compressing it down scale wise. Now, I don't have both those videos anymore. I deleted them because they were taking up too much space on my internal hard drives. However, the lossless video and the video I exported out of Final Cut Pro 
were identical quality. And I'm not even kidding you when I say that. Lossless makes it look like you didn't lose any quality. It, it looks like it is on your screen when you put that video full screen. The one out of Final Cut Pro looked exactly the same. I didn't see any downscaling, not one single pixel out of place when I did that video out of Final Cut Pro X. It was absolutely incredible. 14 minutes of a screen flow 1080p video ended up being 350 megabytes. Absolutely incredible. So I cannot recommend Final Cut Pro X enough. Uh, I've gotten several suggestions to make this video, so I decided I'd make it pretty quick for you guys. And uh, I'll try to get it up sometime this afternoon. I'll go in the screen flow right now, edit it. I'm currently watching uh, David DeFranco's live stream, sitting here in the background. Uh, so I'll watch that, edit the video, and uh, I will talk to you guys in the next one. So follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash cold 4595. Check out the website, techinform.us, where we have great tech related content posted every day. I now do daily vlogs, youtube.com forward slash cold vlogging. And with all this said, I will see you guys in the next video.